Whoa, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane It's quite go get it like me Whoa, please don't be wasting my time with that business Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I have a, uh, well, I, look, I've got something exciting to watch today. We've got Pat McAfee giving his opinion on the big man, Marshawn Lynch, back at the Seahawks. How fucking cool is that, guys? How cool? It's absolutely amazing. I, I couldn't believe it. There's two things I want to mention. The first thing is my dress code right now. I've got a hat, a Nike hat. I've got some Jeffrey Dahmer serial killer glasses, and I've got a retro uh, Bills 50th anniversary Marshall Lynch jersey. None of them go together, but we're just going to have to deal with it. The second thing I wanted to mention is something that I, I, I was going to mention last video, but I thought I'd save it for this one, and that is that this situation with the Seahawks having lost three running backs, having you know a great season, coming into the, the playoffs, thinking, how are we going to get through this with no running backs. You know, we're coming to the pointy end of the season. We need players. We need solid players. They've lost three running backs. And that reminds me, and that reminds me back in 2011, just after I'd actually moved to Australia, the Rugby World Cup was on. And New Zealand, the New Zealand All Blacks, favourites going into the tournament, second game of the tournament, our first five, which is basically our quarterback, gets injured. Okay, this is crazy. This is terrible. Second game, our, our quarterback, effectively, of the rugby team, gets injured. What do they do? They bring in a replacement. Okay, cool. We get through the next couple of games. We get out of the pool stages and into the quarterfinals. What happens? Our backup quarterback, or our backup first 5-8, gets injured. Out for the season. Out, out for the tournament. Both players out for the tournament. What, what, what happens? What happens? Well, they bring in their third string. He plays a couple of games. And, uh, well... In the semi-final, what happens? He gets injured. And then the amazing story happens. Okay, this is, this is why I'm telling you this, because this was a comeback story for the ages in rugby, and it's almost like the comeback story of Marshawn Lynch. Third, first 5 eighth went down injured. What do they do? The, co the coaches, in all sorts of strife, you know, we, we, we have to win this tournament. We have to win. We're in the final, but we need a first 5 eighth. What the hell are we going to do? Well... Well, we put out a call back to New Zealand, back to the old farmland, and we rung up a guy called uh, good old Stephen Donald. And he'll, he'll tell the story as, you know, he was out on the farm uh, fishing for a bit of white bait down at the old local river and got a call from Ted. And Ted is actually the nickname of Graham Henry, who's the previous All Blacks coach. Got, got Ted on the line. Ted says, what are you doing, mate? You want to come and play in a World Cup final? And he basically said, yes, all right, I'll be there. Put the phone down, came into the team. The tournament was actually being played in New Zealand at the time and um, came in, played in the final. We won eight points to seven against the French in the final of the 2011 Rugby World Cup. Stephen Donald kicked the goal to get us from five to eight points. He kicked, a, he kicked a, a, effectively a field goal, a penalty goal, got us from five to eight. We hung on to that one point lead for I don't know how long. It was edge of your seat stuff, it was absolutely amazing for this guy to have, you know, he, he was basically retired from the All Blacks for a couple of years, no one wanted him anymore, three of our best first five eights go down, we've got no one left, what do you do? What do you do? You start looking up old players, you start looking up players who can slot in easily, Stephen Donald was one of those, Marshall Lynch is one of those, what an amazing story, Stephen Donald comes back, plays in the final, kicks the winning goal, after not, never thinking he'd be in the All Blacks again, let alone in a World Cup. It's a fucking incredible story, and I can tell you right now that I just hope Marshawn Lynch can do something similar. I've got a feeling, man. I really do. In last year's ITM Cup final, Canterbury beat Waikato 12-3. Waikato's points were kicked by Stephen Donald, playing in what he believed would be his last game in New Zealand, before taking up a two-year contract with Bath in England. He spent his last few days before leaving fishing and trying to forget the disappointment of missing out on a place in the All Blacks World Cup squad. My hometown Waikato is just uh, 
just on the sort of the edge of the uh, the river mouth of the Waikato River. Yeah, I was just down there for mate. We were white baiting and we'd been white baiting a fair bit because it's obviously had a fair bit of free time and. Uh, Ted's number had come up a few times and I, and I didn't have it didn't have it saved. It wasn't until Mills rang me up and uh, and said that uh, Ted's trying to get you up to Auckland, uh, you might need to get in touch with him. Unbeknown to Donald, a national crisis was unfolding which threatened to derail the All Blacks' mission to win the World Cup in front of their own fans. Dan Carter was injured and so was his replacement Colin Slade. A backup for Aaron Cruden, who, like Donald, hadn't been part of Graham Henry's original squad, was urgently required. Physically, I probably wasn't as well as prepared as I could have been, but uh, no, mentally, mentally, I was fine because I mean, I was, I was pretty fresh from it all and uh, had nothing to do with it really. So I was coming pretty fresh. So as it all unfolded, it was it worked out. And off goes Cruden on a searching run, taken down on the tackle by Trendu. Now the All Blacks have a player down, and it's Aaron Cruden. He looked in a bad way, and uh, the reports the reports coming back from the field from the medicos were uh, <laughs> get warm and get warm quickly, sort of thing. So uh, yeah, that's when I guess <laughs> the shock of reality was uh, right. You're going to be out there, so get ready. And well, cometh the hour. Well, cometh the man. Number four, five eight for the All Blacks. It's been a jinx position, but. Stephen Donald's got plenty of experience. Oh no, it's strange, but to be fair, I was uh, pretty, pretty, pretty confident, and uh, I guess it was something that I, I craved to be out there and uh, craved the opportunity. I guess. And it's on the front side penalty though. Now, who's going to do the goal kicking? Interesting. Stephen Donald striding forward. Obviously, now it's got a fair bit of, fair bit more significance, but uh, at the time it was, uh, it was very much just a, a kick kick. With, you know, probably I think 25, maybe 30 go that just had to go over. So, yeah, it wasn't uh, there wasn't too much going for every head to be fair. Here's his kick, and he's nailed it. Two sets one, two sets one. The captain, France are back. It was pretty sickening actually at times as far as uh, how the gut was feeling, but uh, you know. When you look back at it now, it's something that you're pretty proud of because uh, the boys just kept fronting up for that whole second half and just, as we said, tackle after tackle. And, uh, and you sort of, I guess, people watching probably thought they've got a break at some stage, but uh, how tough and, uh, and I guess the rest is history. Those scenes after the game are, I guess, something you'll, you'll never forget, and, uh, and obviously the crowd were probably just as happy or more happy than we were. So it was, uh, it was an amazing time, and, and to see everyone stay at the ground for, well, I don't know, it seemed like a good hour after the final whistle was uh, was pretty special, and uh, something that I guess, I guess, no one will ever, ever forget that was a part of it. But with that being said, that was a little story, little story time. I am coming to you as a rugby player, as you guys know. And I do have some stories like that in the old treasure trove. Just, just takes, some, takes me to see something or hear of something for me to sort of uh, remember it. So I hope you guys are enjoying yourself. We're probably about five minutes into the video. I'm having fun. We're about to hear Pat McAfee give his opinion on Marshawn Lynch returning to the Seahawks. Let's go. Lynch is on his way up to Seattle to meet with the organization. Uh, as somebody who has seen Marshawn Lynch in the last year, I hope, for the love of God, that Marshawn Lynch gets signed for the playoffs. I hope I get to see that man after meeting him and chatting with him and actually getting a chance to be around him. And, and I hope he wins another Super Bowl. That, Mate, we're on the same page there. That's what I hope happens. I hope Marshawn Lynch shows up there with... He probably hasn't... Uh, I mean, he... There was just a video, what, like a, a few months ago, six months ago, he ran up the stairs to yell at a, or not yell at a lady, he was getting chewed out by a mom oh, because yeah. he was coaching up her son. Look at that. <laughs> Look at his, <laughs> Look at his t-shirt, his, his jersey there. The Grinch that stole football, and it's a picture of a ref. I can certainly understand that, but in the previous video, they'd actually played on that as well, and said it was the Lynch that stole Christmas being that Marshall Lynch came back two days before Christmas. 
two plays on the same phrase, completely different people, completely different way of doing it. And he was coaching him up like, hey, if you don't get your foot off the line, like don't even run, get the hell out of my drill, basically. Like he was actually, by the way, Marshawn Lynch turns out very good coach from what I've been told. Like he runs these camps and does a lot of things for his community. That That's right, that rings a bell. Someone's mum got angry with him, didn't they? But I didn't realize it was because he was coaching their son and gave him a bit of shit, but hey. Lo and behold, he's a good coach. That many people don't talk about because he's so hilarious. So it's hard to focus on that stuff when you have just a legend of a human like Marshawn. I can't imagine Marshawn Lynch would be too hilarious when he's trying to coach football. I think he'd be back to beast mode. He ran up the steps to, to respond to this mom who was yelling at him. And he even said to her, like, oh, excuse me, I am so sorry. I am very tired right now. <laughs> and that's somebody... <laughs> That is hilarious. Somebody who has not ran in, in about, what, a year or so, I could understand how if he's in shape and he can just bounce right back into a Seahawks uniform, and what is it, it's week 17 of an NFL season? Uh, yeah. And just exactly what I said about Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick, who was going to have that NFL workout, he obviously backed out on, but if Colin Kaepernick was able to show up at that thing and be cardiovascular in shape to play in an NFL game, you have to give him nothing but credit for the workouts he's been doing by himself, away from an NFL team, away from an NFL strength staff, and just pushing yourself hard enough to be in shape for an NFL game whenever you're no, nowhere near an NFL You want to know a funny story about Colin Kaepernick and my reaction series? I had a guy recommend Colin Kaepernick, like just genuinely, um, because he was playing quarterback for the 49ers at the time, and um, you know he was probably a a 49ers supporter and, and wanted me to react to their quarterback. Lo and behold, <laughs> I took about two weeks to actually make the reaction video. I put it up. On the same day I put it up, there was a massive uproar about, you know, the shit that happened with Colin Kaepernick, how he kneeled and, and um, came, came out with his opinions against the NFL and what they stood for. Now, I put up that video <laughs> reacting to Colin Kaepernick's play, nothing about this, you know, crazy story that came out. And it was just the biggest coincidence ever. You know what I mean? Like this guy had asked me weeks before to, to react to this guy. I finally do it and lo and behold he's just gone and created this big uproar. So I think my like to dislike ratio was about two thirds to a third. It was pretty horrendous but yeah, it's just another part of this whole journey really. NFL season, you're retired, you're gone. That is magical. So if Marshawn Lynch goes up to Seattle right now talks to Pete Carroll, if they had any differences, they settle the differences, whatever it is with all that, and he signs, and this weekend he just pops off for like 120, I am going to be so impressed with Marshawn, <laughs> not just because Marshawn Lynch is a Well, I sort of said, hopefully he gets, you know, maybe 50, 10 carries, 50 yards, maybe one touchdown, but if he gets over 100 yards, that is the biggest story of the year. A hilarious human who said he grew up running into the back of buses on the streets of Oakland. Like, like not only because of how much he gives back to his town, how loyal he is to Oakland and all that stuff, but because he has been able to stay in shape now for, what, two years, basically, yeah. in week 17? And I saw him, he was having a great time with Skittles and DeZone. Oh, yeah. If he can just bounce back into an NFL locker room and onto an NFL team and be in NFL shape... Bro, we've got to go back to what um, Shannon said before about the running back actually being, you know, the easiest position to just bounce back in and start making plays. Because what is it? 5, 10, 15 yards, 20 yards? You're going to take that punishment, but as far as the cardiovascular, you know, needs of a running back, unless you're going drive after drive after drive, which they're not going to do to, to, to Marshawn Lynch, he should be okay. Number one legend of all time. <laughs> well, hello there. Eh, don't think so after shooting Skittles commercials and this and that and he just goes back in the game like yeah I can, I can sleepwalk that thing over there I can cakewalk that thing if he does that number one legend of all time yeah. of all time if he does I'm not saying this is going to happen because I think that would be very very difficult to be able to do but if he does number one legend of all time and they need him because they just lost the let's do this boys back. so I mean let's Marshall, follow the story the whole way through as a savior is a story that I need yeah how long would that yes. Same here. for him to like Marshawn is a savior that we all need. We all need. We all Marshawn Lynch playing this hero comes back to town role Messiah. is something I want to watch. Yeah, especially on this Christmas week. He pops, uh, out, of, uh, pops out of his cave. Uh, pops out of his turn. cave. Moves the uh, walk. Uh, Excuse uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's back? Marshawn. Now, if what if he goes in there and he says, listen, Pete, I'll come back. We get to Super Bowl though and we're on the one yard line. Bro, sit down, man.
Get your seat. <laughs> you throw that thing, you guys owe me a percentage of the team. <laughs> that would Deal. Be awesome. Deal. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so that was Pat McAfee. Uh, quite enjoyed that. I hope you guys did too. In the next video, we will be watching a film study by my guy, Jackson Kruger Sports. I actually used his channel on a previous video looking at one of Leonard Fournette's film studies. So I hope you've enjoyed that video, but you'll probably see this one first. Anyways, guys, we're here. It is Boxing Day here in Australia. I'll show you my two gifts, my two amazing gifts that I got from my kids. Uh, this one is the first one. And it says, Dad, with some really cute pictures of them on there. And then I got this bracelet, which says Tate and Tristan on there. So, you know, you guys know how much I love coffee, how much I'm always drinking one. Well, this is going to be the cup that I use from now on. And it was Christmas 2019. So guys, there's actually going to be two more videos in this series of, of videos until we see Marshall and Lynch play because that's going to be another video. The next one's going to be this film study. The one after that, I have to watch. I have to watch that play where the Seahawks decided to pass it instead of giving it to Marshall and Lynch. I have to watch it. There's no doubt I've got to watch it. I've got to get that in my, in my mind. I've got to understand the context of it, how long ago it was, etc. So I welcome you to stick around and keep watching with me. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, hit the like button, and if you want to see more, please subscribe, and I'll see you back here very shortly to carry on this journey. That is Marshall and Lynch coming back to the NFL.